Welcome to SoCal Tech Interviews, where we talk with the high-tech entrepreneurs, investors, and others in Southern California's high-tech industry. Today, we talk with Daniel Faber, the founder of OrbitFab, a startup developing ways to refuel space vehicles. I'm Ben Quo, founder and editor of SoCalTech.com. My name is Daniel Faber. I'm the CEO of OrbitFab. We're building gas stations in space. And what is the gas station in space? Yeah, for the last, um, well, forever, for the last 50 years, all satellites have only had one tank of gas. You can't imagine throwing your car away when it finishes its first tank of fuel. But that's what we do in the space industry. The amazing thing is that we do anything at all in space. It's so incredibly inefficient. So we're trying to make satellites reusable. We're building a supply chain for fuel in space to be able to refuel satellites and let them extend their lives, bring them a lot more flexibility, move all of that upfront capital expenditure into operational expense, which lets a whole bunch of new business models come to the fore. And what's your background? How'd you get into this? Yeah, I've spent 22 years now in the space industry. I, uh, I've built 12 satellites, um, several successful products. This is my fourth startup company. Uh, but I've, I've been looking for, for the last 22 years, really at ways to make asteroid mining work. And I came to that because I, I wanted, when I was in first year undergrad, to really help humanity, to, to do something useful. I figured I, I had to address existential risks. And, uh, and so I thought getting off this rock is one way to address some existential risks. And I wrote down a list of all the industries that I thought could pay to keep the first person in a permanent job alive in orbit. And there are only two things on that list. I couldn't see myself as a tour operator, so I started looking at ways to, to make asteroid mining work. And that's what led me to, to where we are now. And talk about fueling. You, you say you're, you're helping to refuel satellites. What does that fuel look like and how do you get it to the satellites? Yeah, at the moment, satellites are using um, chemicals that have a lot of energy built into them, like hydrazine and, uh, and nitrous tetroxide. But they're also using electric thrusters, which they, even while they're electric, they still have to have a propellant. So they take xenon, which they ionize and accelerate out the back of the, of the rocket. So we're looking to provide those types of fuels initially, hydrazine and xenon. But then there are a number of other fuels that are being introduced. And so, uh, so we have a whole range of storable propellants. Uh, what we're not looking to do is refuel rocket upper stages, which have cryogenic propellants like liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. We stayed away from that. We looked at the big market for propellant in orbit. Great. And so how far along are you to bringing this to market? We've already flown two test beds to the International Space Station. Uh, we built those in about four and a half months from a napkin sketch to flight hardware fully qualified to NASA man-rated standards so we can fly them inside the space station. And so we transferred uh, fluids between the two. In this case, we used water to, to simulate the propellant. Uh, so we tested the feed systems in the tanks, and then we actually hooked up to the International Space Station and pumped that water into the space station. So we became the first private company ever to resupply the space station with water. Great, so uh, what's next for you? Well, next we're, we're qualifying the fueling ports. We built a gas cap for satellites because there'd been no way to safely and reliably uh, transfer fuel and refuel satellites in orbit. So we've solved that problem. We work with a lot of companies on what that had to look like, and we're flight qualifying that over the next few months. We've already got to, uh, two sales, two customers for that, that are buying several fueling ports. So, uh, so we now have to finish the qualification, flight test those units, and work our way towards our first operational tanker, which should be happening around mid next year. Uh, great, and the last question is, uh, what's the biggest lesson you've learned as a space entrepreneur? Cool, the biggest lesson I've learned as a space entrepreneur, I think, is focus on the customers. I've seen too many business models where people really like the technology, and they have companies that are stacked with fantastic engineers, but they're not doing enough sales and business development and understanding the customer, and really getting to the bottom of what makes a good product. To me, that's the core of making a good company. Excellent, great, thank you very much.